Joining us now, we have the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Stephen Horsford of Nevada. Thank you very much for being on this morning. Um, uh, I know that everybody is trying to get their arms around what happened here. Um, there's a lot of talk about the culture of policing in Memphis itself, across the board. Not a lot of disagreement about what happened on that videotape, that it was a murder. And a lot of questions about if it wasn't just five officers, if there were many more officers standing around failing to de-escalate. So many questions about policing. What do you think can be done in Congress about a problem that seems to run so deep, is coursing through the veins of, of a police department? Well, thank you, Mika, for having me on. This is a very serious and important issue that all of us should agree bad policing in the United States should not exist. It does go to the root of the culture of policing, but as you just noted in your prior segment, um, they disbanded this uh, special unit in Memphis. Well, data from a report that was recently released from 2016 to 22 shows that that unit and the department actually had three times as many stops for excessive force or uses of excessive force against black residents than they did against white residents. That is the root cause of what we have been talking about as the Congressional Black Caucus and others mm -hmm. on this important issue. Yes, it is time for Congress to act. That is why I spoke to the Nichols family uh, yesterday. I made sure that they knew that we are standing with them on this important matter. Obviously, we send our condolences for the loss of their son, Tyree, but we are going to take action. And first, it's about making sure that the president knows that this is an important enough issue for him to talk about at the State of the Union. I have invited the Nichols family as the guest of the Congressional Black Caucus, so they will be there on that day to hear from the president and from members of Congress on both sides of the aisle how we will finally take action uh, to keep our community safe. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, and as, as you talk about uh, the president's address, the State of the Union, and uh, the Black Caucus has asked for a meeting with him before that, civil rights leaders are going to be asking for that today, the eight organizations that have worked toward the George Floyd bill and met with him to get his support there, uh, want to see him before that. And I was on the call with you and the family last night when they agreed to come to the State of the Union. How important is it now to get the Congress, the House, and the Senate to deal with police reform in a real way that can pass so that we do not end up frustrating uh, people again by getting almost there as we did with George Floyd. We, the whole world said this was a, a moment of inflection and we can yeah. move forward and it didn't happen. How do we and you and the caucus, 58 members, we never had 58 black caucus members before, how can you impact your colleagues that we must pass real legislation in this moment? Well, thank you, Reverend Sharpton, and thank you for helping to bring uh, us together with the family for uh, that important conversation and to make sure that they know we are standing with them. And I asked them, as you know, what do they want? And they said, we want action, meaningful action. And so your question is about what are we going to do? First is we'll, we'll be reaching out to Senator Tim Scott to, to initiate negotiations on uh, principles around the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. The president, the White House, has reached out to indicate their uh, desire to meet on this important issue. And we are working, as you indicated, with outside groups to make sure that everyone knows now is the time for action. This is about people being safe. Look, Tyree was a son. He was a father. He had a purpose and a passion. He loved skateboarding and he loved the sunsets and photographing those sunsets. In fact, he was only 80 yards away from his mother's house when he cried out to his mama after leaving a sunset. He should be alive today and there is no action that 
condones what happened in Memphis. But it's not only what happens in Memphis, it's what happens all across this country virtually every single day. So we will work in a bipartisan way, not only in his legacy, but in the legacy of so many other lives that have been lost. It's time for action now. Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Stephen Horsford, thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Thank we appreciate you. it.